you hear me? Okay. There we go. Good evening and welcome to the Monday, March 19th Town Council meeting. If I could have Councillor Spinella please lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. Thank you. Would the town clerk please take attendance? Councillor Breton? Here. Councillor Forrest? Here. Councillor Hurley? Here. Councillor Lucina? Here. Councillor Lesser? Here. Councillor Rao? Here. Councillor Spinella? Here. Deputy Mayor Martino? Here. And Mayor Morin Bello? Here. Thank, Thank you. you. Um, the first item on the agenda, the proclamation for National Health Week, will actually be moved to our first meeting in April. So we will not have that tonight, uh, which leads us right into our presentation by the Board of Education. We have Mike Emmett, Superintendent of Schools, and Bobby Granado, the Chairperson of the Board of Ed here to give us the presentation. Thank you, Mayor Bello. Good evening, uh, Council. Good evening, Mr. Bridges. Good evening, members of the Weathersfield Public. Uh, it gives me great pleasure to present to you the board-approved Weathersfield Board of Education for fiscal year 2018-2019. I always like to start right off with the numbers. Um, I think it's important to know that this uh, slide has changed from last year. Uh, we have experienced a year like no other uh, this current fiscal year with the holdbacks from the state, the reductions in the ECS, uh, it has been extraordinarily difficult. So I want to remind you that the 1718 approved budget back in May was $57,777,882. Our amended budget came in at $57,035,883 for a reduction on the board side of approximately $742,000. Our proposed board approved 1819 budget comes in at $59,027,663. The amount of this increase is $1,991,780. This is a percentage increase over the amended budget of 3.49%. Okay, so what does this increase include? Well, there are contractual obligations. We have benefit requirements, state and federal mandates, actuarial defined costs of OPEB, trust and pension, and we have our fixed costs, which is transportation, tuition, and utilities, which includes MDC. In terms of the summary by the major object, this has been the case uh, for many years, and that is the bulk of the Board of Education budget is made up of both salaries and benefits. So you'll see the bulk of our budget, uh, $37,661,059, about 63.8% of the budget is salaries for certified and non-certified staff. And then benefits include uh, $8,730,603 for 14.79% of the budget. I want to talk about this. Um, this slide was not in the board presentation, but what this slide serves to do is to really break down that $1.991 million increase and what is it. As you can see down at the bottom of this graph, personal services with salaries makes up $802,481 of that $1.991 million increase. In addition to that, other purchase, purchase surface, uh, services, rather, 627698 and our benefits, $422,047. <clears throat> Add in about $74,000 for supplies, personal technical services, $57,589, purchase property services of $21,500, and then miscellaneous and property have both actually decreased. So you'll see that's that $1.991 million increase. Again, fixed costs and uh, benefits and utilities, quite frankly. <clears throat> I want to show you this is the Board of Ed historical budget increases over the past five years. <coughs> 13, 14, 14, 15, and 15, 16, we've stayed pretty consistent. 16, 17, and 17, 18 both represented the first two years where we received a reduction in state aid mid-year. Uh, this year worse, than, obviously, than last year. 
Okay, and requests not included in the budget, starting with the elementary. One position in special education administrator, tutors in ELL, math, and reading, and certified library media specialist. In the middle school and the high school, requests not included in the budget. Point five, social worker to accommodate increased social and emotional needs of students and one position in special education teacher to support the co-teaching model and reduce current caseloads. In the high school, we continue on with um, requests not included, is a position in world language teacher with dual language certification to meet new graduation requirements, part-time SRBI and ingenuity tutor, and a part-time athletic director stipend. Also, requests not included in the budget for the district and the BOE request. Um, an HVAC technician to support new mechanical equipment at the Weathersville High School and throughout the district. 50,000 for iPad replacements and 100,000 for facility maintenance, repairs, and upgrades. I wanna talk with you a little bit about the potential 18-19 adjustments. One of the things that we're looking at now is the potential of a 6% uh, insurance increase based on the January analysis. Uh, at the current time, that increase was 7.7%, so we're anticipating a, a decrease in insurance. Obviously, this number is not as favorable as it's been over the past couple of years, and it's certainly subject to change. Certainly want to make note of the cost of special education, uh, as is the case in many districts. You might have seen recently uh, Bristol was one district that was requesting a significant increase in funding because of special ed costs. You've seen a pretty sharp increase in the number of students uh, that we've had go to out of district <coughs> placements outside of Weatherspoon. Bullet three talks about the proposed elementary special education program. I want to talk a little bit about this. Um, Mrs. Granato talked about the uh, positions that were not included in the budget. One of the things that we're looking to do at the elementary level here in Wethersfield is develop our own programs, in-house self-contained programs that allow our students to remain here in Wethersfield as opposed to having to get on a bus and go out to Plainville or to go to Wallingford or to go to Windsor. They stay in-house and they get the services that they deserve right here in Wethersfield. So what we're proposing to do here to develop this program is we reduce the um, tuition line where we're having these kids go out, bring them back in, and utilize the savings within the tuition line to invest in teachers, special education teachers, as well as a board certified behavior analyst. These positions would be in-house, as would the kids. We reduce the transportation costs and obviously that out of district tuition. We're looking at two programs presently at this time and they're in the planning stages. One of those programs is an ABA program, that's Applied Behavior Analysis. We have a program over at Web Now that services our primary elementary students. This program would be for students in the intermediate level, grades four, five, and six. We're also proposing a second program. We're going to call it the Strive Program. This is for our students at the elementary level that are suffering from trauma. Students who are emotionally disturbed and cannot maintain a uh, placement in a regular classroom on a daily basis. It's a small self-contained classroom that provides individual needs for our students, again, housed within our own building. You know, I just wanted to add a personal story here. I talked to a mother whose um, son was taken um, to a school in Wallingford, transported there, and you know, this was proposed in a PPT and she okayed it. Um, she said he would go down, I mean, you're on 91 South, going to Wallingford on a small bus and he would spend the day there. And he found out that he was much more isolated than we think. Um, I, for one, always want to keep our Wethersfield students here. And if we can accommodate them in the best environment for them, I believe this is the way to go. Well, this young man did come back to Wethersfield High School, and he's having a fabulous experience. And on top of that, the mom said, and he has a community that he's with. And I think that's a huge point that sometimes we don't think of when we're looking for the best program for these children is that they're now out of our community. So we're trying to bring them back. Slide 11 uh, gets you into some of the individual lines. I'm certainly, uh, in difference to time, not gonna go through each of the individual lines. Uh, this first batch talks about the personal services and salaries. One of the things that's important to note with regard to our bargaining units, uh, we negotiated with our administrators union and our administrators union demonstrating some clear leadership um, took a hard zero 
for this coming uh, year for fiscal 18-19. Uh, so there is certainly some savings there. Uh, in terms of our other bargaining units, we're currently in negotiations with our secretaries in Paris. We'll be engaging with our custodians in the spring. We'll be engaging with our nurses in the spring uh, and our teachers uh, will take place next year. So overall, the personal services for salaries, the increase is about 2.18%. And again, this is primarily for uh, slide 12 here. You'll notice the salaries comprise 63.8%. I mentioned that earlier. And salaries represent 40% 40, 40 of the total budget increase. Personal services and benefits overall within these lines, we're looking at 5.08% in increase. Part of this is representative of the OPEB Trust, other post-employment benefits, which increases this year. With regard to the HSA, just so you know, at this point in time, the only uh, bargaining unit at this point in time that is not in the HSA is the secretaries in Paris, and as I said, we're in negotiations now. Uh, we had eight uh, non-defined, meaning non-affiliated um, uh, members of our team that were not in the HSA. They will be going into the HSA on uh, July 1st. Okay, um, quick shout out to Tommy Dow, who's the young man in there. Um, <laughs> but personal services, the benefits, total benefits are increasing by 5.08% or $422,047 over the current year budget. Benefits comprise 14.79% or $8,730,603 of the total budget. Our benefits increase is 21.19% of the total budget increase. Health insurance is projected to increase 6.9% or $279,852. Defined benefit and OPEB contributions increasing 11.96%, which is $114,227 as determined by an independent actuary and town funding policy respectively. Legal services, as I mentioned before, we'd be engaging in uh, negotiations next year. We're looking at an increase of $65,000 in legal services. This is based upon uh, prior year expenditures. It is important to know that legal expenses uh, encompass human resources, education law, as well as um, special education as well. Again, looking at the purchase property services, our friends at the MDC, that uh, $14,000 uh, of increase representing 20.59%. And then repairs and maintenance. So, you know, one of the things that's important to remember with repairs and maintenance, one of the things we typically do when we're seeing a reduction in our budget or we need to, to shave the budget is we take a look at the repairs and maintenance. And we're getting to that point now, especially with our elementary schools where they're starting to get pretty tired. And uh, continuing to defer or, or not do these maintenance projects certainly uh, does have an impact uh, down the road. And then other purchase services, I direct your attention to uh, the district place <coughs> public and private facilities. You see some rather robust numbers there. Those are the, the out of district tuitions. Some big dollars right there. One of the things I want to also point your attention to is the uh, town BOAG and BOTEC transportation. In order to get down to the 3.49% from the superintendent's proposed 3.97% increase, one of the things that we're looking to do is reduce the BOAG uh, and BOTEC transportation to meet state guidelines. State guidelines require that the district expend no more than $6,000 per student. So at this point in time, we're going to look at that as a reduction. We're in the process of sending out letters to those parents of students that are attending VOTEC programs now. And we'll be also notifying both Weathersfield High School and Silas Dean Middle School specifically to inform parents of this upcoming change. 
I think it's important to note here that, you know, we want to be fair about this. At this point in time, for those of you wondering about Corpus Christi, Corpus Christi is not currently taken as a reduction in this budget at 3.49%. The number that we've received from the state in terms of a, a potential reduction for Corpus transportation is approximately $23,000. So that has not been taken at this point in time. The other reason that we were looking at this Votech transportation as a means of cutting is we have 12 students currently out in Votech programs that will be graduating. So we have a large number of students that are going to be departing. So this was the perfect time to, to move forward with this. <clears throat> Okay, other purchase services, bed tuition and transportation increasing by 21.04%, which is $70,700, due to 14 new outplacements in the current year, and that's what we had just been referring to. BOAG tuition decreasing 30% by $21,084, based on projected enrollment. Here we get into instructional supplies. We're talking about our electricity. Again, electricity continues to go up. We're finding more and more uh, at, at the high school. That high school is used 24 hours a day, seven days a week. It was over there on Friday evening, and we had uh, the middle school uh, production of Shrek. We had a leak over at Silas Dean Middle School on the stage of all places. So we moved over in the span of a week, and the kids were able to perform at the high school. In addition to that, so we had a full auditorium, we had a full gym. High Crest did their annual uh, staff, uh, staff parent basketball game. So we had a full house. Um, so the school is always being used. So we're finding that that electricity continues to creep up. Also, I want to make note of the fact that diesel fuel, um, diesel fuel is uh, being absorbed by the transportation contractor, and that's reflected in daily bus rates. Okay, we have our property um, decreasing 7.47% or $12,498 due to reductions of various classroom furniture requests and replacement of technology purchases. Um, talking to Keith recently, the system is one-to-one -one grades three through 12. Just a piece with regard to the classroom furniture. Uh, what we've done in the past is we have um, allocated funding to um, refurbish classroom furniture in two rooms uh, per building. And uh, we've held off. This is the third year in a row that we've held off on that. So um, it's, it's kind of been status quo. And then with regard to miscellaneous, this is just dues and fees. And we have a small decrease there. Uh, we've eliminated membership in uh, a couple of our um, educational uh, groups. Okay, so what are we expecting from this budget? What are the outcomes? Well, we remain committed to providing a high quality education for all our students. We remain focused on continuous improvement while adhering to state and federal mandates that impact our budget. And families make residency decisions based upon the quality and reputation of a school system. And school district quality impacts our property values. And our last slide here tonight, the first four we've already done, which is, as you can read up there, the 13th, we had the superintendent presented the budget to us. Um, we had our workshops on February 22nd and March 1st. The Board of Education, um, on a snowy evening, approved the budget March 13th. Approved the budget going forward to the town on March 15th. Tonight we're doing our budget presentation to you. Going further, the town budget hearing is April 16th, 2018, and our joint budget is workshop is on April 18th. And the town council notifies the Board of Ed of budget allocation by May 15th. At this point in time, I'd like to open it up for any questions. Councilor Forrest. Thank you very much. Thank you for the presentation. Uh, thoughtful and um, concise, which is appreciated. Of course, we're going to see you uh, in more in a workshop scenario. So I just wanted to hit on a couple highlights that I had a couple questions on and maybe sort of set the stage for that longer conversation as we move forward in the workshop. Mm -hmm. um, the first is the discussion about the proposed elementary special education program. 
and we noticed that there was 14 new outplacements. What do you anticipate? I'm, I'm, I'm guessing, or from my understanding, is that the special education program is something that you are actually anticipating doing under this proposed budget. That, that is correct. It? So what is the change in outplacement going to be or anticipated by put, bringing some of the programs in-house? What we expect to see, it's twofold here, Matthew. We're expecting to see a, a number of students that are currently in out-of-district placements return. In addition to that, this will provide us with another level of support and another level of service in the least restrictive environment for those students that might go to PPT and would we be looking for an outplacement. Rather than going that level to an outplacement, we could go to that self-contained program in-house. Right. So we see it as twofold. So if you have a... What percentage of kids that you current students that you have currently have outside district are you thinking about pulling back in in the following years? Is we thinking about a ten percent reduction, a thirty percent reduction, some other percentage? We're we're probably looking at around ten percent. It's going to depend. Remember, with this Matthew, it's each individual student. I'm not sure. going to bring a student back just for the sake of saving money. It has to be correct for the student. We have to make sure that we have the programming built in. Um, and we need to make sure that um, we have the space set up. So, Where are you thinking about important. housing? We're looking at, uh, for the ABA program would be Webb. That's the natural location for that because we currently have the primary ABA program there. And then we're looking at the, uh, the program, the Strive program as we're going to call it. We're looking at that over at Hammer as we have space at Hammer School. Okay. And related to that, um, we noticed that there was a percentage increase for special education services. Certainly there's the outplacement. Um, if we do bring them back in, was the reduction taken into consideration not just for the fact that we wouldn't have to pay tuition, mm -hmm. but also that we wouldn't have to pay the transportation mm -hmm. of those people? Yes. That was included in both of these? Yes. In the reduction? And then also corresponding to that, I, and I know um, Board Member Morris has, has been working on this for a while. Have and perhaps this is an answer for another uh, for our workshop, but have there been out outreaches to for the portion of the of the outplacements that are not educational but are more medical? Have there been have we looked into uh, private insurance reimbursement for the medical costs? And and mm -hmm. and may, and if there isn't a great answer to that question, I'm not trying to play gotcha at all, and you know <laughs> that. Uh, if we could get what the outreaches are and how, what your proposal is to help reimburse some of those costs? Well, I, I have a partial answer for you. In terms of the private insurance, we don't have a mechanism in place to uh, re have, get reimbursement from private insurance. However, the state has mandated that districts reach out uh, for Medicaid reimbursement. So starting next month, we have a process in place with the third party provider where all of our um, support services that are provided to our students will be submitted for Medicaid reimbursement. Um, we're projecting uh, for next year approximately $20,000 of revenue to come in. Again, it's not huge. Historically, yeah. it hasn't been huge, but um, we expect to, to uh, adhere to the, to the statute. Staff has been trained at this point in time, and that rollout, as I mentioned, will be happening next month. And then my last question is also related to special <coughs> education. If a portion of those people were bringing in-house, whether it's for cost, a pilot program, or how, you know, space needs and those kinds of things, is there a thought and discussion, whether it's in this budget or the following budgets, about working sort of as maybe a collaborative with other towns and mm -hmm. other areas yes. which maybe we don't have a specific portion of, et cetera, you know, some type of a sharing routine where we can try to reduce some of those tuition costs further. And I'm just looking at the 700,000 increase on top of already the large number, which we all know about and how expensive it is and worth it, but mm -hmm. similar services that can be delivered at a more efficient cost is something to think about. Yeah, we certainly, as, as you know, and you know, you were instrumental in supporting the Weather, uh, Weathersfield Transition Academy getting up and running, and that's a program that uh, we've been able to take in students from other, other towns. Uh, actually, Newington, I understand, is uh, dealing with the situation where they may, they may not have space. So they've already come over to take a look at the space that we have, and that's about as far as it's gone at this point in time. But we, you know, we remain ready to go in terms of adding additional students there. So it stands to reason that once we get this program up and it's, it's running and we look at the capacity levels, if we have the ability to work collaboratively with the other regional towns here, that we would bring students in from other, uh, other districts as well. And 
with the with what we've done so far, has there been a <coughs> how are we doing from a revenue standpoint of that particular program? Is it break even right now? Do we see a benefit? What's your anticipated benefit or debt? Deficit. Basically, we're, we're around break even at this point in terms of what the we get for the tuition from the student from the uh, other town uh, based upon in a comparison to the, um, the rent in terms of what we're paying. So we're not making a lot of money on it at this point in time. But at the same token, uh, we've got a great quality program. And when you think about it, if you had those additional 15 students that are at the Transition Academy <coughs> and I was doing outplacement for them. Getting the whole half a million dollars. Absolutely. Yeah. And, and then some. Okay. Thank you. Thanks for the time. Deputy Mayor. Thank you. Uh, Mike, in your yes, presentation sir. tonight and in the handouts we received in the mail, uh, tonight you have 17, 18 budget, 18, 19 budget, yes. increase, decrease. Is there a way of getting another column showing for current year paid to date? Mm -hmm. And on uh, the handouts we got in the mail with the breakdown, it just shows 2018, 19 by person. Mm -hmm. Is there a way that could be adjusted to show us current year and current year pay to day? Because it would be helpful in looking at it to sure. come up with more questions Absolutely. for you. Absolutely. Absolutely. Mr. So Gazaka. Work that off of Thank you. Yep. Yes. Absolutely. We can do that. Okay. And uh, just adding to what Matthew said before uh, on the Transition Academy, uh, how many out, out of town students have we got right now? We have that? one. And how are we doing with marketing in the program with other towns besides what you're talking about now? Yeah, we're, we're marketing. Well, actually, we're marketing uh, to our friends up to the north in Hartford, which um, does not have a lot in the way of uh, transitional programming. So uh, we've had a transition at the Transition Academy. We have a new teacher, and actually her background, uh, she comes to us from the Hartford Public Schools. So we are utilizing that uh, level of expertise to expand the horizons, so to speak. <coughs> Thank you. Other questions? Councilor Hurley? Something just to go with what Tony said. The, um, the charter actually says to give a line item comparison of estimated receipts and expenditures for the current physical year, not just what we've had to date. And I think Matt did that last time mm -hmm. for us. Yep. Okay. Thank you. Councilor Lesser? Thank you, Madam Mayor. Mr. Superintendent, Madam Chair, great presentation, and thank you for, for the hard work. I have two questions, and we can do it at the workshop, but I'll just throw it out there if you don't have phone. One was on page 17, trying to understand the transportation, the regular education transportation has a significant increase, and then I, I know the private school transportation, and you talked a little bit about the special ed transportation, but can you comment a little bit about that? And again, if, if more details needed in the workshop, I can certainly wait, too. Yeah, we, we could certainly provide you additional uh, detail there, Mr. Lesser. I think one of the things that's important to know with the transportation, specifically on the regular ed side, we uh, struggled with our previous uh, transportation provider. Uh, and last year we entered into a contract with a, a new provider. And what we've seen this year in terms of quality of service is dramatically improved from what we had, uh, specifically in the realm of our athletic uh, runs where our prior uh, company was unable to uh, regularly provide us with the transportation uh, defined in the contract. Uh, we've seen with uh, autumn transportation uh, consistent coverage of those athletic runs. In addition to that, you've seen brand new buses um, that are uh, nicely lettered. Uh, we've seen a dramatic decrease in the number of breakdowns. Um, we obviously have had the growing pains, so to speak, with regard to new drivers coming in. And again, Mr. Kazaka can attest, as can I, we've ridden a couple of buses over the course of the uh, season, just in terms of dealing with, uh, with some student behavior and some driver behavior. Um, with that being said, we can get a breakdown for you of exactly what each of those entails. So obviously with regular education, those are the runs that we do in the morning to our high school, middle, and elementary schools. Our special education transportation, that may encompass uh, smaller vans. And for our programs that go out of district, one of the things that we try to do is we will ride share with other towns. So for example, let me give you a, a school, Northwest Village, which is out in Plainville. If I have students going to Northwest Village, Newington has students going to Northwest Village, we can collaborate with Newington and do one <coughs> run and split the cost. So they start here in Wethersfield, pick our kids up, then they go over to Newington and continue on to Plainville. 
So we can give you a better breakdown. Yeah, get, specifically, get like it looks like the regular transportation budget number had a significant increase, and I don't mm -hmm. know if that's contractual or. Yeah, it is, sir. It seems it like. It is. It's also fuel, right? The fuel and the, the yes. gasoline costs. Mm -hmm. And then just again, you, sometimes when we look at these things, we see we look at the larger increase, larger numbers. We want an explanation? So on page 19, it looked like. The administrative office supplies had a pretty significant increase. I didn't know if there was something that was being purchased that was a one-time purchase or something no. a little out of the ordinary there, or just the cost of buying things has gone up. No. That was actually, Matt, could I have you come up and just explain it? We talked about that today. That's just a placeholder with regard to our current uh, budget. So. For the current year, when the first ECS reduction came along, we did a 70% spending cap. The savings was about $90,000. We just hit that one line as a placeholder rather than going through the budget and hitting dozens of lines. So okay. it's, it's really skewed. There's really not, there's a marginal increase year over year. It's not what is on paper at this point. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, Matt. Are there other questions? Councilor Rao. Thank you, guys. I appreciate it. Along those lines, back to page 17 with transportation. Um, homeless transportation is almost a... 100% bump, it's 86. Yes. Is there something new that's going on, or a new program, or new endeavor with? We, we've seen an increase this year, Mr. Rell, with regard to the number of homeless students that we have here in Wethersfield. And under the McKinney-Vento Act, the district has the responsibility of providing transportation if a parent uh, claims and proves homelessness. Um, this kind of ebbs and flows, and this year has been difficult in terms of the number of uh, students that we've had become homeless. Mm -hmm. Now, are they homeless and living in Wethersfield, or are they, do they, are they out of state or out of town students that may claim residency through relatives in Wethersfield? That's a great question at this point in time. It could be, it could really be either. So let's say, for example, we have a student who is residing in Wethersfield. They have a legal residence here in Wethersfield. They become homeless. They are evicted, and they end up moving to a hotel down in Rocky Hill. Under McKinney-Vento, they have the right, if they have been enrolled in Wethersfield during this school year, to claim Wethersfield as the school of origin. They remain in the Wethersfield Public Schools, and I have the obligation to provide the transportation from the hotel in Rocky Hill to Wethersfield for the remainder of the year. So that's one piece. You have the other piece where uh, there are um, some resourceful parents that will utilize a relative's address. Um, that's where Mike Goddard, our residency officer, gets involved and will mm -hmm. verify that the head is actually <coughs> in the pillow there and that we have an affidavit from the homeowner that clarifies that that individual is in fact living there. Okay. Um, we've done a multitude of different residency. Uh, we've done hearings. We actually had a hearing that went to the state <coughs> level this year. Um, so they're on it quite frequently. But I will say with McKinney-Vento, it's a very broad law, and it really supports um, students. Typically what happens if we're going to <coughs> challenge McKinney-Vento, it ends up being along the lines of someone has uh, moved out of Wethersfield and they live geographically too far away to logistically get a bus down to them. Uh, mm -hmm. We had a family that moved to Norwich uh, and was in a shelter in Norwich some years back. To try and maintain that school of origin, it just it didn't make sense. Right. Okay. I appreciate it. Thank you. You're welcome. Other questions? Okay. Seeing okay, none. Great. Thank you very much yes. for coming tonight, evening, and I look everyone. forward to talking again in April. Thank you. Thank you very much. Have a good evening, everyone. Thank you. <coughs> Excuse me. Okay. So our next. <clears throat> Our next item of business is public comment. We have three hearings tonight. Our first hearing is a certified resolution of the Town of Wethersfield authorizing the application for a Connecticut Small Cities Community Development Block Grant. Did you want to speak on that before we open to the hearing? Open the hearing, then I'll speak. Very good. So I'll open the hearing on that if there's anybody who'd like to speak on that one item, that one resolution. Mr. Manager. Thank you. Madam Mayor, town, uh, Council, uh, the town is applying for a public housing modernization $800,000 grant. Mm -hmm. Earlier this year, a letter was submitted to the Department of Housing of our intent to apply for such grant. Uh, the project that the Housing Authority is proposing is Highview Terrace Apartments. Uh, improvements to work includes abating and replacing kitchen floors, replacing kitchen cabinets, bathroom toilets, storm doors, and ins installation of a, of a security system. 
Also improvements at Harvey Fuller Senior Housing Complex work include debating and replacing laundry room flooring, laundry room hot water heater, mechanical baseboard, thermostats in the hallways, exterior doors, upgrading the intercom system, replacing toilets, water heaters, and shutoff valves, and installation of a security system. <coughs> exterior siding will be replaced. Um, there's a current grant, 2017 grant, for work at James Devlin, including paving the parking lots and sidewalks, new baseboard heaters, new thermostats, interior doors for pantries, bathrooms, and hot water heater closets with lever action hardware and new exterior storm doors. As of uh, 228, 11.5% uh, of the grant was expended. Um, and that's what I have for this one. I'll have comments on the other two as well. Okay, very good. Is there anybody from the public who would like to speak on this one resolution? Come on up, Mr. Young. Good evening, Robert Young, 20 Copper Mill Road. Um, I've, I've been in this meeting, in earlier meetings, where we continue to get these, apply for these grants. <coughs> and, you know, as the town manager just read off all those things, all those items that are going to be worked on or be repaired or whatever it might be, uh, I, I really wonder if it's worth doing. I ride by some of those buildings that they call the housing authority buildings. I don't see where they have the value to put any money into some of those. I see where you continue to spend money that is borrowed money. And I really think you should consider the fact of getting out of this. We don't need to keep throwing money into a deep, dark hole. These buildings have been renovated and renovated and re from from the many different times I've heard all the things you're going to do to these, have done to these places, I, I don't see where the value is. I don't think a local, normal homeowner would put money into some of those places that they call the, the Weathersfield Housing Authority. I would say you should vote no on this. Thank you, and save the taxpayers a lot of money. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Young. Do I have anyone else who'd like to speak at this time? Kathy? Uh, good evening. Uh, my name is Peter Huckins from Community Consulting. I write and administer small cities grants for the town of Wethersfield. And small cities grants are funded by HUD and administered through the Connecticut Department of Housing. As a requirement of the grant application, two public hearings are required to be held. The first one being uh, the uh, before the application submission of April 12th this year. Uh, public hearings give residents of Wethersfield a chance to comment on the proposed activity and to provide comments. The town of Wethersfield, as Jeff already mentioned, proposes to use up to $800,000 for a 2018 Small Cities Grant to complete renovations to 32 housing units at Harvey Fuller Senior Housing Complex and 28 housing units at Highview Terrace Apartments. Without external funding, the Wethersfield Housing Authority would not be able to make the much needed repairs to the units without taking drastic me measures such as raising rents. Harvey Fuller Senior Housing Complex, located on 31 Butler Street, is a nonprofit housing community renovated in 1986 for elderly and disabled residents. Harvey Fuller Senior Housing Complex provides an environment where residents can still live independently within a social network. The location of the complex provides peace and quiet and an affordable and relaxing atmosphere for the older generation. Jeff already mentioned the scope of work, so I won't reiterate. Um, Highview Terrace Apartments, located at Woolcock Hill Road, Oxford Street, Highview Avenue, and Holbrook Terrace, is a nonprofit mixed use housing complex. It has children, elderly, uh, just everybody. Uh, the scope of the work, again, I won't reiterate. The act these activities will, prov will provide a 100% direct benefit to lower income persons. 
currently there are thirty three residents in r v fuller senior housing complex and sixty two residents in high view terrace apartments renovations to both housing complexes will directly improve the living conditions of their residents these improvements show that the residents are of value to the town enhancing a feeling of community and equality among citizens we also feel that this project directly benefits the community for, by providing construction jobs for the unskilled, semi-skilled, and skilled workers. Housing rehabilitation projects provide numerous entry-level positions and provide stable employment to the local small business contractor. Also, local retailers benefit from the purchase of materials and supplies. Minutes of the public hearing are included in the grant application. Showing your support demonstrates to the Connecticut Department of Housing that the community is behind this project. So please take the time to state your name along with a few words of support to be included in these minutes. Thank you for coming out to the public hearing. Thank you. Good evening, Mayor, Council Members, Jeff. Hi, Dolores. Um, I'm going to be kind of cutting this on the fly because everybody's mentioned a lot of the things I had in mind. Sure. Would, would you first state your I'm name? Okay. I'm Perfect. Kate Forcier, the Executive Director of the Housing Authority. Um, the Housing Authority has once again asked the town to apply to the state for the federal CDBG funds on its behalf to make the improvements at the two properties that Peter mentioned. Um, Harvey Fuller houses those that are 62 and over but it also houses those who are 100% disabled of very limited income. At the Harvey Fuller, their income could be as low as our lowest residence income is $8,800 a year. At Highview Terrace, where primarily single mothers are there and disabled as well as elderly, the lowest income there is $10,500 a year. Those equate to $875 and $735 a month. It's not a lot to live on. And in order for these people to be able to stay in Weathersfield that they've chosen to be their home, they need to have affordable housing. The children in those units would certainly not be able to uh, take advantage of the educational opportunities or live in what is considered an area of opportunity such as Weathersfield. Um, and the education that Weathersfield provides them is hopefully going to move them up and out of public housing, unlike their parents were able. Uh, the scope of work was, was mentioned. Um, five years ago, we started the renovations at Highview Terrace. We ran out of money, so we didn't get to complete it. That's what we're hoping to do now. Um, and with the remaining money in the grant to do everything that we can do at Harvey Fuller, it will help to bring both of these properties into the future and maintain this. Uh, the Housing Authority has worked really hard to maintain its properties to not only fit into its neighborhoods, but in some cases to exceed the neighboring houses, um, some of which are starting to be sold and renovated, flipped over, um, and also to make it so that these houses don't look like public housing. Um, when I grew up in Wethersfield, uh, Westfield Heights existed. I never knew public housing existed in town. There was no identification in the school that some your classmate was going was living in public housing or the projects as it was called at the time and I think the kids deserve that the kids deserve to have a positive self-image by living in a good environment and attending the good schools so as, as well as the seniors you know the the current senior generation is still of the generation that worked hard all their lives and yet they don't have much to show for it now and they deserve, everybody deserves a decent place to live. Thank you. George? Good evening, I'm George Kelly, uh, 56 Pickering Lane. I'm the uh, chair of the Board of Commissioners of the Housing Authority. And I just wanted to, first of all, confirm the uh, support of the, of the board for this request. As, the, as your materials indicate, and as you know, this is a request for pass-through funds. Or the town acts as a pass-through <laughs> agent to get these funds. Uh, and uh, as, as Kate explained, they are necessary to keep up what is 
basically are the town's obligation to provide uh, affordable low-income housing to, to people. Uh, so again, I, we appreciate the cooperation that uh, we've gotten from the town. I, I can't uh, let that go without mentioning in particular uh, the manager's efforts in attending what I'm sure is a uh, fascinating <laughs> and uh, educational day-long program on uh, fair housing, uh, which is part of the application process. It gets us points, and we appreciate that. Uh, so thank you very much for considering this. Thanks, George. Is there anybody else who'd like to speak on this resolution? Come on up, Dave. Uh, good evening, David Kirk, 149 Broad Street. I'm, I'm speaking to support the grant. I think it's, uh, it's, uh, it's a great thing to help elderly and poor people, and I think uh, 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 this grant will, will do will, will definitely help repair or, or replace uh, uh, the uh, living conditions of people who are elderly, so that they don't have to pay for it themselves for for renovations. Uh, I don't s see how anyone, well, I guess there are some people who would disagree, but I, I, I wholeheartedly agree that this is a good idea. And, and, uh, and since uh, one of the person says this, these minutes will go in, the, uh, in, the, in, in their package, you know, I, uh, unfortunately we don't have more people here in the audience, but um, so I'll be one of the few that's uh, based on the attendance who supports it, and I think it's a great idea. Thank you. Is there anybody else who'd like to speak? Seeing none, I'll declare the hearing closed, and I will open the second hearing, a resolution of the Town of Wethersfield establishing a program income reuse plan from CDBG-assisted activities. Mr. Manager. Thank you. Um, the town is proposing to put in a program income reuse application to allocate $69,200 of program income funds, which you've received from other CDBG activities towards the work at Harvey Fuller Senior Housing. This will be used in conjunction with the 2018 uh, Community Development Block Grant funds, if awarded. If the program income reuse in the CDBG applications are approved by Department of Housing, then the award will re be reduced by $69,200. Thank you. Is there anybody in the audience who would like to speak on this resolution? Mr. Young? Robert Young, 20 Copper Mill Road. Uh, the manager mentions that um, they want to take the program income funds and turn it over to the Harvey Fuller organization uh, on that repairs, I believe. That's what he's intending. But why don't we give the money back? Or why don't we give it to someone who owns a home and help them out? And it's obvious. The Weathersfield Housing Authority and their buildings get a tremendous amount of help from pass-through funds from the federal government, and I'm sure in the past from the state government, which doesn't have funds anymore. But, you know, we, we taxpayers, madam, are, are, are hard-pressed in all different directions and, I can, and I'll go on later on about those directions. But we are extremely hard pressed and taking borrowed money, because that's all it is, is borrowed money, tack it onto somebody's, some generations back away, you know, as they come along. They're the ones that are going to pay the bill. I really say we shouldn't spend any of this money. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anybody else who'd like to speak on this resolution? Seeing none, I'll declare the, res the hearing closed. And the third hearing, resolution for the use of program income. Is there anybody who'd like to speak on this hearing? Mr. Manager, did you nope. have anything to add? Okay. Seeing none, I will declare the hearing closed. We will move into general comments. The public has five minutes to speak. Is there anybody who'd like to speak on any topic? Mr. Young.
I came here tonight, Robert Young, 20 Copper Mill Road. I came here tonight to talk about a different subject, but I'm going to change gears. And it's only because the Board of Education was here tonight, and I see they're gone. Um, we citizens, Mayor, we, we've had one of the worst number of years living in the central Connecticut, specifically Wethersfield. <coughs> we've seen our tax bills go up while we saw <coughs> the economy stagnant. We see our water bills, just like the Board of Education. We see our water bills go up because of all the little different taxations, the clean water project that they have that the prior town councils, 10 years ago, eight years ago, whatever years ago it was, voted for it. And now we're looking at extreme water bills. Thanks a lot to all those people who were sitting on the town council back then. They put us now in this ugly situation. Our electric bills continue to ratchet up with added cost <coughs> taxation that's put on there. Just go home and look at your tax, your electric bill. Go look at your telephone bill. Go look at your natural gas bill. All of them. And some of those are the problems that we have right here with our prior town councils who allowed this to happen and voted for it and went out on the street and peddled to pass. We, we, we you know, I, I understand the superintendent talking about his bills going up and so, so aren't ours. And I don't see how in the world you can continue to ex expect to increase taxes year after year on us. Look at the Board of Education. It wasn't long ago they created all-day kindergarten, all-day pre-kindergarten. And where did the money come from? Did they go out and say, we're going to cut other costs in order to put these programs in? Absolutely not. They didn't even talk about the costs. They went out and they rented a transitional academy building for what? 4,750 bucks a month. That's $57,000 a year. Tonight, they're whining. They're short money. But they have to pay that bill. It's, they put themselves in that position. Yet, they also know that when they went out and looked at that building to rent, they didn't, they didn't come up with an idea of how they're going to pay for it except slip it into the taxpayer's bill, and he's going to take care of it. They wash their hands. They have nothing to do whatsoever with where the money comes from except push it onto the taxpayer. And this continues on and on. And then you just recently had your ordinance for fracking, uh, fracking oil, or whatever that is, that you don't like fracking oil. But madam, Every time you pull up to the gas pump and pump your pump gas into your car, you're pumping in a product that has been fracked. Every time you turn up your thermostat or walk into a nice warm room in your house or even in here, <coughs> that natural gas has been fracked. The oil that's running in your engine, that chemicals, it's not oil anymore. It's made out of natural gas. It's been fracked. Yet you people buy it. You people condemn the process. You voted to condemn it. You don't want fracked material in our town, but it's running in the vehicles of your car. It's running through the veins of your house. There's no sense in what you do. You have no integrity. I came to talk about something else. Oh, let me get back to what I want. Town, the town budget, the Board of Education short money. I think what you should do is insist that they go back and look at the last four, three, four, five programs that they initiated and look at those to get funded by the people that are using it. Why should we old people be paying for that pre-kindergarten classes when the parents can? 
We just, the town just saved those parents daycare money. They should be able to pony up and take care of it, madam. Okay. Because we, see, I'm Mr. wrapping Young. it up, I'm Thank wrapping you. it up. And, and going on to the Standish House where <coughs> they're making, the, the Weathersfield Historic Society is pulling in 40 some thousand dollars a year on the Standish House and we're only getting a mere hundred dollars. Okay. I tell you, Thank we you. Are, our town council has been the most worst business people you anybody can imagine. I'll be back. Thank you. Is there anybody else who'd like to speak? Mr. Colantonio? Good evening. Gas Colantonio, 16 Morrison Avenue. It seems that I've been here forever and I'm not going to go away. Over the years, I did some research, you know, and I told you before that uh, before 1955, Morrison Avenue never connected to Silas Dean. It's amazing, right? Maybe for the newer councils, uh, not all of them are aware of it. That means that we never had true traffic. You know, the beginning of Morrison Avenue and Walker Hill Road, we have two nice pill pillars on both sides. They mean something. Whomever started and whoever built those houses with the help of the, the town or the guidance of uh, the town of Wethersfield. Uh, the setback <coughs> is not the same, it's not normal. It's not the same as Hillcrest Avenue or any other streets. And matter of fact, the three houses on the left side or the north side approaching Silas Dean, they have a different setback. <coughs> Why? because it connected now to Silas Dean. Not my house. All the other houses that were built before 1955, they have a smaller setback. I replaced his windows not too long ago, and I guess, uh, well, not too long ago, it's a, a long time ago, but the noise level on my street, it's, it's high. It's amazing. And the traffic is twice as much as Hillcrest Avenue. The sidewalk, let's talk about a little bit what I've told you already, the safety. The sidewalk on the north side of Morrison Avenue between Orchard and Tifton was never built there because the older generation that lived there knew it. The students attending Silas Dean they did not want them to cross right across Tifton. That's the worst part on the street. And yet, you guys, none of you have been on my street to check. Or probably the, the town manager has been there, but I don't think he's an engineer. So he doesn't know personally. It's amazing. We never had the sidewalk. Now there is a sidewalk there, so the kids cross on Tifton, which is the worst part. You have moved the road to the south. You have made the, the property on the corner of Tifton and Morrison Avenue with a retaining wall. Nothing has happened since you did reconstruct that. That was the only place where we had new sidewalk that was good sidewalk and nothing changed. The only thing you have done, you made the street worse because as you come from the west on Morrison Avenue. And because the street, I guess, you know, uh, it goes a little bit toward the south, you end up on the other side of the center line of the road on Morrison Avenue, and that's not safe. I've been there since 1973, and I never saw an accident until last year. You have to wonder why. And yet, nobody seems to care. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Colantonio. Is there anybody else from the audience who'd like to speak? Mr. Mazzarella? Good evening, Tom Mazzarella, 600 Walker Hill Road. <clears throat> I just wanted to comment briefly on the Board of Ed presentation. I think it's a nice 23-page PowerPoint presentation. 
In my opinion, it has just way too many pictures. I'd like to see some real, real numbers here. And I noticed that everything, pretty much everything presented is budget to budget. We, I think the town residents are intelligent enough to be able to look at something like this and say, what was the actual money spent in 16 to 17, in 17 to 18? Did it line up with the budget? We don't know. All they're telling us is that there's increases or decreases compared to the last budget. Now, Councillor Hurley requested the actuals uh, from a uh, year to, to date. And I guess it's in the charter that they're supposed to do that. And this is the second year that I've heard them request that. I think they should present that without having to be asked. And I know it's, this is addressed to you because you happen to be sitting here. Unfortunately, the board left after their presentation. Um, it's, it's $60 million. And I think we ought to be able to see what the real numbers are. Uh, I just think it's unfortunate that it's presented in the manner it is. I know uh, the town manager, when he presents the, his budget, he puts it online. Some 300 page budget, line by line. I can see what he makes, it's on there. I mean, what's the problem with having that same kind of transparency with the Board of Ed? Everything has to be secretive. We don't know what they spent on transportation. They're just saying that it increased from last year's budget. Well, what did they spend last year? Thank you. Thank you. Is there anybody else who'd like to speak? Anna? Hello. Uh, I'll uh, talk a little bit more about the uh, the uh, grant, but um, uh, first I'd like to say I'm, I'm proud to, to have to live in Westfield, I, and I think all you guys are doing a great job. Uh, and um, uh, one, one thing I like about Westfield is the image Westfield has, and the image I and other people have had is that we have good schools. That image has never gone down since I've been here for 20 years. And you know we're not the top schools, but you know we're not a rich town either. And uh, and we're and the board of ed and the town council has has uh, provided what the schools need to maintain that level of education. And 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 now we have other things we have to be concerned about. And I think I I, I watched the presentation and I and the uh, the uh, superintendent and the chair of the board of ed explained that uh, the increases, which were not a wasn't a huge increase in in the budget, were were justifiable because of contracts and and. Other expenses which they got into, they explained. So I I, I watched it and I and it's and and they weren't asking for huge increases, and I think uh, they should get what what they're asking for, to maintain our our, our level of uh, uh, of education in our in our town. Uh, as far as the, the uh, another thing I'm I'm proud of with of Weathersfield because they 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 look out to find money to improve our town like this this grant, you know. They looked to apply for a grant to help elderly and uh, low-income people, and and uh, and that's what I like. You know, a town that is very uh, proactive in helping people in homes that maybe are in need of repair, and and uh, that are getting old, and and you know who do, who who doesn't care about poor and and, and the needy? You know, I, maybe some towns may not look as hard, but I I, I notice when I'm. Watch the town council. The town council looks for money where, wherever they can get it to help their town, to help the people in their town, whether it's uh, grants for, for the elderly or the low income or the schools. And uh, I think you're doing a good job. And, you know, you know I, I, I hate to hear people say bad things about you, you know, but uh, so I'm saying some good things about you. Thanks. Thank you. Appreciate that. <laughs> Anybody else like to speak tonight? Okay, seeing no one, we'll move into council reports. Do we have any council reports tonight? <coughs> Councilor Hurley. Yeah, I was at the Housing Authority, the last Housing Authority meeting, and I just, since Kate and George are here, I just want to say they do a great job with the uh, very little resources that they have, and I think our community has supported low-income housing for many years, and I think it should go on for many more years. 
And um, like I said, they have very little resources. Even this grant they're getting doesn't do, they have to pick and choose what they want to do. It doesn't do everything for them. So I'm, they talked about that a lot in the meeting and I think they do a great job. Thank you. Other council members? Councilor Rell? Uh, I was at the last planning and zoning uh, meeting two weeks ago, uh, Tuesday. Uh, they took up a proposal for a medicinal marijuana facility. And Tom, I think you spoke of it at the last um, uh, council meeting. The uh, proposed medicinal uh, facility would be on the Silestine Highway. Um, right now it's a property that uh, is vacant. Um, it is in the uh, enterprise zone, or I forget the exact term that the um, town center is where they call it. It's a portion of the town almost from the car wash north to about where uh, Corpus Christi Church is. Uh, there were a number of residents that spoke up about um, their concerns with having it located there. Uh, as well, there was a couple patients and uh, supporters of the, the facility. The uh, PNZ uh, voted to table the matter to um, tomorrow night, and it's just kind of a friendly reminder for those who um, would like to attend and you know either support it or oppose it. Planning and zoning is planning on taking it up again tomorrow night here at Council Chambers, 7 p.m. Uh, on Tuesday, March 20th. Thank you. Thank you. Councilor Lesser. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Uh, at the beginning of the month, I attended the Chamber of Commerce meeting, uh, and it was an excellent meeting. They talked about their upcoming events this spring, the fireworks on June 2nd, which is a great, great town event, as you all know, the car wash, a car wash, the car show on, on May 20th. Yeah, I need to get my car washed. The car, the car show, and also they're uh, going to do a Chamber Awards uh, Best of Weathersfield, which has never been done before, but... Uh, that should be an exciting event, exciting evening. And they're also partnering with a group we just started here in Weathersfield, which is a business advisory board, which is to help connect our Weathersfield students with local businesses for internships, job shadows, industry tours, and the teaching of basic business skills. And two of their uh, board members are helping coordinate those activities between local businesses and our school system. So a lot of good things happening at the chamber. Thank you. Other council members? Councilor Breton. Thank you. Um, Thinking Spring, um, I just wanted to announce there's an Arbor Day uh, ceremony on April 28th um, at the community center. <laughs> so if you can attend, um, it's at 930 if you're interested. And that's at the community center, did you say? Yep, at the community center. Okay, thank you. Any other reports? Okay, moving into council comments. Oh, oh I'm sorry. sorry. I, I, had, I had to find my email, so I apologize. Um, I was not able to attend the WACPD meeting, but I did want to mention they send the, the minutes, and the membership has been very low, so what they're going to do is try to circulate um, to parents of children with disabilities and the Board of Education a survey that might be able to help them get some new membership over there. Um, they did talk about their transportation, which is a, a yearly thing that they like to assess, and they talked about um, some of the, the programs that social, social services has been helping them with um, as far as the energy assistance program and the food bank. So hopefully they'll get some new members and um, some other folks that might be able to help them out with uh, attendance at their meetings. Great. Thank you. Okay. We can move into council comments then. Do we have any council members who have comments tonight? Councilor Lesser? Thank you, Madam Mayor. I just wanted to say I uh, got the privilege to walk in the St. Patrick's Day Parade, and there was a tremendous uh, Weathersfield contingent, many of the members of council, Madam Mayor, the town manager, and wanted to congratulate uh, Councilor Hurley and the rest of his committee for putting on a great, great event, and it was um, really well attended. And it was a little warmer, so it was definitely <laughs> warmer. Worried it was going to be cold, so good job. Thank you. Any other comments? Just to follow up on that, um, 
if you could tell my daughter that it was cold, uh, I don't think she'd believe you, <laughs> or that it was warmer this year, I don't think she would believe you. Uh, we did march, uh, this was my first year not marching with the town council, um, but I did march in a contingent just behind, and it was Weathersfield's Corpus Christi uh, School, uh, their first year marching in the parade, and uh, the kids really enjoyed it. So, great job. Thank you, Councilor Hurley. I will mention one more thing that Corpus Christi School did join us this year along with the Girl Scouts and if there are other uh, organizations out there that would like to march we're always welcome. Thank you. Um, I'd like to just add that we are having a coffee with the mayor and chairperson of the Board of Education this Saturday March 24th at 930 at Heirloom Market. So any members of the public, residents, or business um, owners who'd like to come and speak to us personally, we are happy to meet with you then. Um, Town Hall will be closed on Friday, March 30th for Good Friday. And the Taste of Weathersfield will um, be held on April 7th. Tickets are currently available at the Historical Society. So moving on to Town Manager's report. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Uh, just a shout out to Barbara Rue, who gave me my uh, Weathersfield Ren Onion tie. So I told her I'd wear it to the first meeting. So thank you very much, Barbara. <laughs> I appreciate that. Um, I've also asked to give kind of a background and a refresher on Morrison Avenue and its history. Um, we did go over the more than half dozen studies that have been conducted recently, recently being in the last 10 years or so on the street. On December 5th, 2016, I gave a presentation to the council at that time to go over every one of those studies that occurred. Um, some were done before the renovations to the sidewalk, some were done after. The results of all those studies were shared with Mr. Colantonio. Also, it is true that when Morrison Avenue was built in 1952, it did not go all the way to the Silas, that, but that's because the property east uh, did not develop at that time. There wasn't a landowner that wanted to develop it. So once it did develop, um, it did extend to the Silas in the late 50s. The Tifton and the Ireland subdivision were built in the 1960s. So that intersection at Tifton and Morrison dates back to at least 1960. And as Mr. Colantonio said, he moved into the subdivision in 1973. Um, also, in the late 90s, the street had a 35 mile an hour speed limit. There's records that show that this town went to the state twice to reduce that from 30 to 35 to 30, and then again from 35 to 25, which it is currently now. Um, that information has been shared with Mr. Colantonio, uh, to the best of my knowledge, more than once. So. If the council has specific questions on any of these studies, speed studies, traffic studies, um, the 12 different variations of the sidewalk we reviewed in order to do the sidewalk construction roughly eight years ago uh, and approved through a vote of the neighborhood on which design to take, all those things are available uh, if you have any questions. Thank you. Uh, town, do you have any other comments? I do not. Okay, thank you. Town Clerk Communications? Uh, we're getting into the uh, election season, so we will have party selection of delegates to state and district conventions uh, by town committee or caucuses between the 27th of uh, March and uh, April 3rd. Uh, I, I will have the selections in my office by 4 on April 4th. And then party conventions are late May, in case you're interested. Thank you. Okay, we can move into council action. Uh, the first action is an ordinance, uh, excuse me, is a resolution. Do I have a motion? Motion to adopt a, certi a certified resolution of the town of Weathersfield authorizing the application for a Connecticut Small Cities Community Development Block Grant in the amount not to exceed $800,000 for improvements to certain properties owned by the Weathersfield Housing Authority. Do second. I have a second, thank you. Um, Mr. Manager. Thank you, Madam Mayor and Council. This is the resolution that authorizes the staff along with the Housing Authority to apply for the grant. Are there any questions? Deputy Mayor. 
Uh, no questions, just a comment. Not this past election, but the election before. Uh, I had uh, the streets in the housing authority around Lancaster and the streets there and went door to door. At that time, uh, major renovations were being done to those buildings, outside, inside, and all the people I talked to there were very ecstatic to have their quality of life increasing. And uh, the work done on the outside between the windows, the doors, the uh, siding and all did wonders not only for that, those buildings, but also increasing the value of the properties around them that are private properties of taxpayers in town, not the housing authority. Thank you. Any other questions or comments? Council of Latina. I just want to make a comment to piggyback off of what Tony was talking about. I think it's a quality of life issue for folks in our town, and I think that if these properties haven't been touched in quite some time, that we should support this. It brings the value of the properties up. It really helps the people have a better quality of life, and I do think it's our responsibility. So thank you for doing what you do. Thank you. Okay. Seeing no other comments or questions, all in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Anybody abstaining? Okay, motion passes. Second, uh, second item, another resolution. Do I have a motion? Councilor Forrest. I move to adopt the resolution of the Town of Weathersfield establishing a program income reuse plan from the CDBG assisted activities. Do I have a second? Second. Manager, any comments? Uh, thank you, Madam Mayor and Council. This resolution provides for program income that we have uh, received from other CDBG assisted activities be reused uh, for housing, specifically for this project. And it allocates the $69,000 we have on hand towards that, goal, that project. Thank you. Any questions? Okay, seeing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? Motion passes. Our third resolution, do I have a motion? Yes, Madam Mayor. Uh, I move to adopt a resolution for the use of program income. Do I have a second? Second. Okay, Mr. Manager. Thank you, Madam Mayor and Council. This specifies how that program income is to be used. Are there any questions? Seeing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 Anybody opposed? And any abstentions? Motion passes. Thank you. Okay. Yes. I just want to thank Kate and her crew and the Housing Authority for doing this. Uh, since you've been on board, you've done a lot of work over there, enhanced a lot of lives. Thank you. Almost $10 million for it. Yep. Thank you. We appreciate your hard work. It's, uh, thank you. <clears throat> okay. Um, no unfinished business tonight so we will move into other business the approval of a historic document grant for the town clerk do I have a motion motion to authorize the town clerk to apply for and accept a historic preservation grant for public document management do I have a second second okay oh. town clerk oh. uh, we are we collect money for the, the state for various uh, programs, and one of them is one for the uh, Public Records Administration of the Public Library. So um, probably in 20, uh, 2001, they started a program that giving, giving some of the money back to the towns to help us take care of our land records. And uh, we have applied ever since, we, since they do it. Most of the time, we get a targeted grant like we have this year. Uh, our town goes by size. We get $6,500 back of what some of the money we collected for them. Um, in other years, we've had um, competitive grants where we've gotten uh, between forty-five dollars and $50,000 for different programs, which we use for the records management downstairs, our sealed the, for confidential uh, programs. We have a lot of uh, records retention schedules that we handle in town hall. Uh, and we have the land use uh, building and engineering and the fire marshal and uh, have combined some of their records upstairs in the engineering and building section. Uh, and that was, we did that with a competitive grant that we applied for. 
Um, so we do continue to use it throughout the town, not just in my office, but this office uh, right now, we're gonna use some of it um, to have some of our grantor and grantee indexes rebound because we need to have uh, paper records in my office. And we have records obviously from 16, um, uh, time, 1615, 13, you know, early on that are all ink and paper and you can still read them. So we have other things that we do to keep them. We have them all been filmed and they're all, some of them are on disc, but as you know, discs uh, and electronic, electronic things keep changing very quickly. So you have, some of them become use, not usable anymore. And ones that you keep, want to keep, you have to keep redoing them uh, through a newer program. So the paper and pen <laughs> seem to be work pretty well for land records. Uh, and we uh, will re re repair some more of their uh, books that we have. And the other we do is with the records management, which we have somebody who comes in and helps us and it helps everybody in town, every department in the town hall, because we don't have um, a lot of staff and it does take a lot of staff time in pulling records and uh, keeping track of what has to go and be disposed of. So that's why we're applying um, for, we have to apply. They have money for every single town and community to take back, get back, but you do have to apply for the $6,500. Uh, Thank you. Are there any questions? Seeing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed and any abstentions? Motion passes. Um, our next motion, our next um, order of business is the approval of a distracted driving enforcement grant. Do I have a motion? Yeah. Um, motion to approve the distracted driving enforcement grant for the Wesfield Police Department. And do I have a second? Second. Okay. Uh, thank you, Madam Mayor and Council. This is a grant uh, to do enhanced enforcement for well, distracted driving, cell phone, speaking on the cell phone, text, so forth. We've gotten these in the past. We've had uh, very positive results. So the uh, police department would like to do another uh, round. Okay, thank you. Are there any questions? Councilor Rell? Not a question, but more of a, a statement. Um, even though we do uh, put our resources out there, um, the town does receive 25% of the ticket uh, price or ticket cost to uh, the uh, um, driver who's been in violation. So even though we put a, um, a body out there or a police officer out there, we do recoup some of the money. So it is a good thing. Thank you. Thank you. Anything else? Okay, all in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposition and Anybody abstaining? Motion passes. Moving into bids, our first bid is crack sealing. I see we have the town engineer in the audience. Welcome. Do I have a motion for crack sealing? Motion to accept the CRCOG bid for crack sealing services and approve the use of seal coat ink. Do I have a second? Second. Okay. Thank okay. you, Madam Mayor, Councilors. I'm here this evening seeking approval for award of our annual uh, crack seal bid for the work that we do. Uh, every year, town goes through as a preventative maintenance measure and crack seals roads that are about eight to 10 years old after paving, you know, as the cracks form, as moisture and water gets in, uh, the, hot mix, the hot seal material keeps the water out, and helps the roads last longer as the breach thaw cycles tends to break them up pretty quickly. <laughs> this has uh, been spent annually uh, as part of our, our tax levy funds um, CROG, uh, a regional organization, puts out bid solicitations usually every year or two for this type of work, which allows municipalities to be able to use those bids and contract directly with the contractors. Uh, so for this year, for the type of hot pour uh, seal mix that we use, uh, Seal Coating Incorporated from Braintree, Mass was the lowest bidder for that type of work. Um, they have done work for us in the past. Um, one thing I did want to mention is typically I've come to you in the fall uh, to do crack sealing in the fall and the last couple of years we've had some issues with trying to get the crack sealing done in time to get our pavement marking program done before the weather gets too cold. 
So the last couple of Novembers, we've been really cramming to get our paint, uh, pavement markings done. So crack seal can be applied spring or fall as long as the temperatures are pretty moderate. So I'm, I'm looking this year to, I want to move the crack seal program up into the spring, like May, June time frame. That way we're not, um, you know, trying to really cram in two big programs at the end of the year, which is, like I said, been uh, complicated the last couple seasons. So I'm here uh, tonight seeking approval for that. Um, similar to last year, they were the company uh, we had worked with also because uh, they were low bid for the last contract. Um, we pay it on a per gallon basis, so we track every day how many gallons they're applying, and that's how we, we uh, pay invoices on the program. Thank you. Are there any questions? Deputy Mayor? Uh, <clears throat> thank you. Derek, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm aware of this program, but last year you had a special program down on Griswold to take care of the cracks down the center for that, something different. Uh, I just wondered how that worked and if you were planning on doing that again this year as well. Yes, we did a section of Griswold last year from Country Club to Highland Street. Um, you know, I really wanted to see, evaluate it through a winter season and see how well it held up. I mean, thus far, I've looked at it a few times. It seems to be holding up pretty well, so my expectation is that we will do that. We will, um, what we'll do for that, because the cost was relatively inexpensive for that, um, to the point where we could probably get some three written quotes. We'll do that again like we did last time. But I am, you know, assuming nothing changes the next few months, I am planning to do that process again uh, this coming fall for the rest of Griswold Road. Okay. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Other questions? Councilor Rell? Um, thanks, Derek. While you're up here, I just want to ask you a question about the um, spring, fall, and then future next spring, 2019. Where are we with the paving? on that and you know I'm sorry Jeff if I'm jumping the gun on this but we did talk about two meetings ago with uh, the lack of funds coming in from the state for um, town aid road for paving how are we on track for that are we um, we're gonna have spring pa repaving this year fall repaving and then spring next year's in jeopardy well I mean that amount you know it, it will reduce what's available to us um, however, you know, we were reevaluating our funds every year. We budget a certain amount of funds and, you know, generally we try to be a little bit on the conservative side. Um, so we've had some leftover funds from recent years that just didn't get spent that were budgeted. So we're, that will help offset some of the loss in that revenue stream coming in, okay. um, this year. And we'll talk about it in a couple of items as we're looking at a spring, uh, a smaller spring and summer program for various reasons this year in fall. Mm -hmm. So, uh, you know, we still, based on uh, w what we have available now, because that little bit of excess that was just left over from a few previous programs should help us offset it over the next, you know, couple years of the program. So okay. we'll evaluate as we go through. Mm -hmm. You know, I think the numbers we put together to estimate what the costs are seem to be uh, conservative, which is, which is good. Um, so that gives us a little more flexibility um, when things like this happen that we have a little additional funds Nothing just to keep wrong with things being going. conservative. Yeah. Thank you. You're probably going to see it in the spring program of 19. 19. Yeah. And in addition, uh, the low SIP money has been reduced in the governor's budget, so we're short again another 100 plus. So okay. those will accumulate into the spring 19 program. Thank you. Okay, are there any other questions on crack sealing? Seeing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed and any abstentions? Okay, motion passes. A motion, do I have a motion for sidewalk repairs? Go ahead, Councillor Forrest. <laughs> motion to award, I move to award the sidewalk repair contract to Martin Laverio Contractor Incorporated. Do I have a second? Second. Okay, okay thank you. Our, our previous contract with our on-call sidewalk contractor had expired then in December, so we put out a new bid. Um, this bid and contract was set up for this year, 2018 and 2019, to get us through a couple construction seasons. Um, this is the contractor the town has available uh, to repair sidewalks along town property at town facilities as needed. Um, they do do work at times in front of private property, only when a town tree has caused, you know, roots have raised sidewalk slabs where it become, becomes trip hazards. Um, as part of this year's work, they, they aside from sidewalks, they'll be doing some brick sidewalk repairs with CIP funds that was worked into the contract that's down on Main Street. Um, CIP has allocated some funds to repair of uh, sporadic areas where we've had issues with the walks being lifted by roots or dropping from you know, being driven over and such. That's worked into this as well as uh, sidewalk ramp repairs that we do periodically throughout town. 
as part of um, ADA and uh, Department of Justice requirements require us to do. Um, so this program, we had put it out to bid. We had five bidders. Uh, Martin Lavero was the low bidder. I've checked references. Um, they do a lot of work in the area. Um, they do this type of work for other municipalities. They came highly recommended. Um, they are in town quite often because they are MDC's contractor for similar spot repair type of sidewalk work. Um, so based on, based on the feedback I got and just my <coughs> general knowledge of them, um, and being that their prices were very reasonable uh, considering what we were anticipating, uh, the bid was set up with uh, assumed quantities just to get an idea of where everybody's pricing came in. Um, the contract will be funded through funds through this year's operating budget and CIP funds, and then depending on what happens next year, there'll be some additional funds hopefully added to it, but um, it'll expand the two, year, two years of uh, the next two construction seasons. So I was recommending a word uh, to them as the little bidder. Thank you. Are there any questions? Councilor Rell? Uh, thanks, Derek, again. And I know you said you had gotten uh, or received uh, some you know, feedback or some references for uh, Martin Laverio. Just looking at the um, bids, they came in pretty low compared to uh, the rest. You know, on average, 68 was the next, but it looked like two, including one uh, company from Weathersfield, came in at about $80,000. Um, and then I guess if you look at the numbers and then the 91 as the high, the average would be somewhere around 78, 79,000 for this. These guys came in at 52. Um, just want to make sure that reputable company, um, not something, you know, they come in, do work. And because I know some of them are for uh, brick pavers as well. Uh, it's not your typical sidewalk repaving program. Just making sure they're not going to you know, shortchange us on anything. Do we have any guarantees from them? Any assurances that uh, um, if we don't like the the service they provide, we can get something in return? Yes, we. Uh, I, I had that same concern, um, and I had contacted them as well as talking to other references. I did speak to other municipalities who use them for this type of work, and their bid pricing for the major items was really in line with what they had bid on. Um, this was set up as a prevailing wage job with the expectation that the contract would, see, would exceed the $100,000 requirement. Um, and I did speak with them directly and made sure they, they understood that because that's how it was bid because that will often affect bid prices. Mm -hmm. um, that as well as, you know, the ability to get them here when we need them here. Um, I think th they are aware of it and they were comfortable with these numbers. Um, like I said, they're in town a lot anyway, so that helped them, um, I think, probably offset some of their costs as well. Uh, so I, I did. I did have those concerns as well. And our contract gives us that ability if we are having problems with, with these contractors to you know have the flexibility of terminating the contract and then moving on if need be. But okay. they have been uh, in the area for quite a while. They're a pretty reputable form, firm, so I feel pretty comfortable with the Great. award. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Any other questions? Okay. Seeing none. All in favor? Aye. 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 Um, any opposed? And any abstentions? Motion passes. Uh, paving program bid. Do I have a motion? Yes, Mayor. I move to increase the purchase order for Tilcon Connecticut Inc. for paving services by 310000 based upon the state paving contract 17PSX0238. Do I have a second? Second. Okay. Uh, the state uh, every year puts out a uh, new paving contract. They actually contract with a number of vendors that give pricing for different municipalities that they will work in. Um, what we've done in the past, a lot of municipalities do, is they piggyback on those contracts. So we don't have to contract directly. We can work right through the state contract with these, uh, with these contractors and bidders. Um, as you'll know, in the next agenda item, uh, Tilcon was the low bid for milling work. And... Um, my general preference is, if, if feasible, I like to have the same company doing the milling and paving uh, because they are kind of interrelated as far as how, how the work comes out, how, how the drainage operates. They were, in this particular bid, the second low bidder, um, although the low bidder in this particular case has worked here for the town before. Um, we have had problems with them. Um, my, my personal experience, I've had issues with them in other municipalities. So based on that and the fact that Tilcon is my recommendation as a low bidder for the milling work, um, I'm recommending Tilcon uh, for the paving work as well this year. Um, they've, they've done work in town a lot. They are generally a low, uh, you know, one of the low bid prices for Weathersfield for this area. 
Thank you. Are there any questions? Seeing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? And abstentions? Motion passes. And our final bid, the milling program. Do you have a motion? Motion to increase the purchase order for Tilcon, Connecticut, Inc. by $45,000 for road milling services based upon state contract number 16PSX0206. Second. Thank you. Okay, this is uh, another state contract similar to the last. Um, they had put, put this out um, this past spring, and it's still in effect through this year. Uh, Tilcon is still a little bitter for milling uh, for this work. Uh, as we were talking earlier, we're splitting the program. Uh, instead of just doing one big spring program, we're doing some spring work and some summer work. Part of the reason for that is we have a couple roads in this program that are going to require more than just a milling and an overlay. We're going to have to do some reclamation work, which is a process of them going in because the roads have deteriorated so much that we can't just mill off some pavement and repave it. We're going to have to do a reclamation process, which is breaking up the concrete, blending it into the base, gives us a new stable base material, and then we repave over that. So if the roads get to be too far deteriorated, we have to do that. We have a couple of those roads in this program, so we need a little bit more time so we can do a little more design work and enge uh, engineering on the drainage that might need to be added with some, some small drainage work with it. So some of those roads, as well as one of the roads near the high school that would be impacted with school traffic, we wanted to hold off till the summer. Um, which is why we split up this program. Um, as I've said before, Tocon's done uh, this work in town before. Uh, they've been good to work with. They were the low bid. Um, so they're our recommendation for the milling portion of this work. Thank you. Are there any questions? Okay. Seeing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? And any abstentions? Motion passes. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, we have one resolution for introduction, and then we move to the minutes of March 5th. Do I have a motion? Before I move on the minutes, I just announced that the mighty Yukon women won 71 to 46 tonight, so congratulations to the Yukon women, and then I Mr. motion. Mr. Lesser, aren't you supposed to be paying attention to the meeting? <laughs> I am paying attention to the meeting. I took a second, because that's very important to, to our state. Uh, so I move to uh, approve the minutes. <laughs> That's right, economic development. I, I move we. Out on that one. That's all right. I, de I, I deserve it. Uh, I approve. I mo make a motion to approve the minutes of March fifth. Uh, second. Oh, thank you. Um, are there any corrections, omissions, or deletions for the minutes? Okay. Seeing none. All in favor? Aye. 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 <clears throat> any opposed? And is are there any abstentions? Hey. Oh, yeah, I wasn't here. here, so I have to abstain, yes. right? <laughs> yes. So thank you, Councilor Hurley. That was not the game. I wish I was. <laughs> okay, so we move back into public comment. Is there anyone from the public who would like to speak? Mr. Colantonio. Good evening again, Gus Colantonio. Thank you for the information. You know, two minutes before, I saw David sitting next to me, and I asked the same question. I said, you know, who won? And he says, I don't know. And then you told me. That was my, good. My pleasure. Uh, a comment regarding the, <coughs> the crack ceiling, I guess. Uh, I think it's a good move to move it in the, in the spring instead of the fall. I think in the spring, the, the cracks are a little bit wider, so when you put the liquid there, it goes down in. You know, in the fall, uh, the pavement is so expanded that these cracks are very small. So when you put the liquid, it never goes in. But in the spring, I think it's a little bit better. Uh, let me go back now to Morrison Avenue. Uh, what the town manager has said is correct, except that he never addressed my, my question, my problem. And, and let, me, let me say something that uh, what, he, what he said tonight, that basically, he was correct that the right-of-way did not exist between Silas Dean and Tifton. But there is an existing right-of-way that's at Tifton that was supposed to connect to Church. So something has changed there that basically you still have a right-of-way from Tifton Road that goes to Church, which was never built. But yet, Morrison Avenue was connected to Silas Dean, which it was never meant to connect. Since we did not have, well, I, he's, he's saying no. Because otherwise, if that was the, if that was the, 
basically the decision and the intention of the, the town, the frontage would have been a little bit different. My lot is 185 feet. I only have probably 20 foot of, of frontage. Okay, there is something wrong with that. Now, let's, let's go back. Uh, he spent a lot of time, but I think it was a waste of time. You know, and, and I'm just gonna say about the, the report, the police report where it says you do need a stop sign in the westbound direction because you can only see 290 feet going uphill, all right? And I'm, I'm talking to the police department again now. And, and on the other side, from Tifton, looking up, you can only see 232 feet, and there is a need of a stop sign. I have charts right here, tables, that say 232 feet, it's only good for about 22, 23 miles per hour. The posted speed is 25, and by the way, I've been there since 1973, and I never remember the speed limit on Morrison Avenue of 35 or 30. No, I do not remember. If it was before my time, I don't know. But in that time, it was always 25, school zone and children. Okay, that's what I remember. Now, again, if it was before the construction, I did not have, I did not have anything to stand on. But after the reconstruction, you have moved the road basically to the north, to the south, and you have created a problem. Unbelievable. Now, before then, I, I know we did not have much of a curbing, but every year you have to replace the curbing on Morrison Avenue at those intersections. And the question that I have to ask, why? I tell you why, because it was not designed properly, okay? I, I brought up a lot of times this, the concrete sidewalk next to, at the corner of Tifton and basically Morrison Avenue, they did the sidewalk over, nothing changed. There is no grass strip between the curb and sidewalk. When you have a sidewalk adjacent to the road, you need a non-mountable curbing. And usually the guidelines are that if you have a grass strip, sidewalk four feet wide and then you have it connected or adjacent to the road the sidewalk the guidelines say that should be two feet wider no the sidewalk is still four feet okay i believe that it's one of these days probably a big accident is going to happen and i'm going to blame you guys because the safety that road the way they changed it, you move it to the south and you move it back to the north again within a few hundred feet, that's not the way to design. I said it before and I'm not gonna go away. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anybody else who'd like to speak? Good evening, David Karuk, 149 Broad Street. Um, I, I spoke in support of uh, uh, Gus's stop sign before and then later I changed my mind and I supported it against it. I told him to drop it because I spoke to the last mayor and, and he and from talking to him I got the impression that he, he would never change his mind there would be no proposal or stop sign or any motion for a stop sign so I told Gus I said forget about it you know you're not going to get a stop sign but we got a new mayor now so we got some new council people here and, uh, and Gus showed me th some of the plans just a little while ago, what he was talking about. The police report was nine years uh, old, but it, it did mention that there should be a stop sign there. He showed me some old construction plans that uh, support his argument of the distance for safety of having a stop sign there. And I, I've also heard uh, uh, the Jeff speak about why uh, all the transportation uh the departments or plans or experts he spoke to did not recommend a stop sign there based on their criteria. But, you know, there are, there are based on one person did a little study, so oh, you don't really need one there. You know, there wasn't, wasn't accidents there and all this. But, you know, I, I think what would support his argument is that if the actual police officer was here speaking, that would make it a lot stronger. Or if the actual engineer who designed those construction plans of that street and the, and the distance was here to support him, but that construction plan I think was a little bit too old. The police officer might still be here, it was nine years ago. 
But um, I think I think um, I'm supporting him because I think he still has a chance of getting his top side there. We got a new mayor. I, I think things are different uh, than in the past. I remember one person speaking about how th there was a dangerous section, little kids were unsafe in some area, and one of the residents talked to a mayor decades ago, and and the mayor said, "I'll get you a stop sign." And then, and then a few days later, there was a stop sign there. You know, maybe things have changed. It's not that simple anymore, but. Uh, I think I think mayor does have power, and I think there, you should consider it because some of the things I looked at, police officer recommended, uh, 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 and some of his construction. Oh. Yeah. It's his turn to talk. <laughs> well, I, I'm just going by what I saw, but but it, it was an old uh, report nine years ago. I'll probably speak to you, Amy, at coffee hour. Maybe Gus should go to, and we'll discuss uh, maybe. Maybe I'll talk to Jeff later and find out whether or not uh, those reports that Gus has are, are any good. But, you know, I know this has been going on for a long time, far too long. But, you know, I, th I think it should be considered. You know, we got a new mayor. Uh, I, I know, uh, I don't know why it wasn't considered. I don't know exactly why, but uh, uh, I think he has enough reasons and enough evidence to support having a stop sign there. So thanks. Thank you. Anybody else who'd like to speak? Mr. Young? In the meantime, I just want to reiterate that that's a westbound sign going up the hill, not a down the hill sign on eastbound. That's what that study says. The numerous police department studies say there is no necessity for a stop sign. The engineering studies say there's no necessity for a stop sign. No one has come out and said that there's a need, according to the manual of uniform traffic control devices, for a stop sign. Okay, Mr. Young. Robert Young, 20 Copper Mill Road. <clears throat> um, the, the crack seal discussion tonight, I, I hope they're not going to use something, some derivative that came from fracking. I mean, I'd hate to see all you people get offended. But uh, I believe that, you know, every time you go out on the road, you're all over that fract, refract material. Um, and how long does it take to know if, if, the, if the crack sealer guy is doing a good job. I mean, I, I know he shows up at 8 o'clock in the morning and he does his job, but what about the quality? I mean, my, my, I, I go on roads that are bumping, bumping like this. Griswold Road. I mean, Jeff rides on the same road as I do. And uh, it's terrible. Maybe they should smooth it out a little more. Tonight you voted on... Um, the program income to throw into the into the, the hole for uh, the Weathersfield Hist uh, Housing Authority. You know, if you would have given it, loaned it to some homeowner, and done what program income really means, where it would turn over and turn over and turn over, you would help a lot of people. Throwing money into the housing authority is just a big, deep, dark hole. Tonight, also, which I failed to talk about, was, uh, and Tom, a number of people spoke about it also, was um, the way that the Board of Education re gives their presentation and their verbiage or narrative. I wrote down, total profits are increasing 5.8%. 5.08%, and then in parentheses, $424,147 over current year budget. And this is for total benefits. If total benefits are only 5% that they're talking about, total 100% benefits would be a tremendous amount of money. And I think we should really be seeing the dollars that they're really talking about and show what the 5% is. Here's, here's the 95, here's the, what, uh, what we're currently, I think some members had mentioned earlier, here's what the actuals are, or this is what we're talking about, and it represents, and 5% of that equals another set of number to give us an idea of, of what that line item is really talking about. And, and they talk about a number of, uh, you know, buying more electric. It's going up 5.6%. And then in the parentheses is X amount of dollars. Well, what's the real electric bill? 
Uh, you know, we should be able to see that instantly on their PowerPoint. And I do know I've talked about what uh, Mr. Hurley spoke about a number of times regarding uh, in their presentation, they should be giving us year-to-date number. Uh, year-to-date number from last year and what they've spent already up till now and there's left four months or whatever it is to get an idea of where we stand. Uh, I've asked for that five, six, eight years ago. Um, but anyway, Mayor, I uh, also had spoke about the um, Weathersfield Historic Society with the lease with Standish House. And uh, in, the, in the lease, term number, uh, number two, term, it says landlord shall have the right at the 10th lease year and each 10th lease year thereafter with the tenant's involvement in discussion and upon uh, of the town council to revise the monetary terms and conditions, so forth and so on. And I've asked you many t numerous times already, have you negotiated with them to because they are picking up $47,000, which is going in their pocket, and we need money in our pocket. And of course, we have council members who approved it years ago. We have planning and zoning members who approved it years ago. And here we are, stuck with a bad deal. You know, they had this thing called an 824. We're going to send it on to planning and zoning for them to review and give a vote. What good is that? Look at this lease. It's disgusting. It's totally disgusting for the people that paid for it. The people that owned that piece of property in Standish House. Thank you, Mr. It's Young. Terrible. If you would just wrap up, please. Your time is up. Yes, ma'am. I'll wrap it up. Thank you. I, 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 you know, two, two meetings ago, you had um, these, these, these forms have been, these leases have been worked over by our town attorney. Two meetings ago, you awarded them, or you were going to award them their hourly rate, and who, who is going to get it? And I complained. I'm going to still complain. Reading these leases, I's are not dotted, T's are not crossed. The, the people that paid for it got nothing. Matter of fact, they got the poorest deal in town, thanks to our attorneys, thanks to Mr. Forrest, who also approved this. He voted for it, and he voted for others as well. But okay, thank it's you, really, Mr. Really Young. Bad, Your time is up, really sir. Really bad deals that we got into, madam. Thank you. Good night. Did you, Mr. Manager, would you just comment on the fracking issue, please? Yes. Uh, both for the seal coating and the uh, paving, the necessary affidavit stating that no fracking waste was used in the production of those materials have been signed and submitted by the contractor. Thank you. Is there anybody else who'd like to speak tonight? Mr. Mazzarella? Tom Mazzarella, 600 Walker Hill Road. I'll try to keep it brief. Everybody wants to get out of here. I just want to say, uh, David made me feel a little bit guilty because I'm always up here complaining. And uh, I just want everybody to know it's not a personal thing with any of the counselors. Um, I spent most of my life here in Wethersfield. I love this town. I think it's fantastic. I spent most of my career traveling around the world, some of the most godforsaken places you can imagine. and. Uh, it was always nice to come home to Weathersfield. Uh, I have a lot of family and friends here, and uh, we're all about the same. My friends are the same age, and uh, the conversation is always uh, centered around when they're going to move out of Weathersfield. Um, everybody's not as fortunate as us, and they have trouble making ends meet. And uh, to see the taxes increase each year, to see the Board of Ed spending increase each year. It's uh, disheartening. And uh, that's why I get up here and complain. Um, I'm just trying to convince everybody to 
look a little harder and sharpen their pencils in every way we can. Uh, I think there's a lot of, I, I don't think there's any one big thing where you're going to say, hey, let's do this and we'll save a million dollars. I think it's going to be a lot of small incremental changes, tightening uh, the belt. Um, I had a business that sold uh, very expensive aircraft engine parts and uh, we saved most of our, we made a good portion of our profit in actually in the shipping costs because everybody sends things from Wethersfield to Glastonbury FedEx overnight and they pay $25 for it when you could send it on UPS ground and it'll be there the next day for $5. And I think you have to take that approach with a lot of the things that we do in town. It's the small changes that could add up to substantial savings. And uh, I just hope everybody will look along those lines. I know there was one comment made about the uh, electric uh, consumption at the high school, being that the building's being utilized so much. And uh, so there's evidently a leak at the Celestine uh, auditorium and they couldn't have the event there so they moved it to the high school well I hope somebody shut the lights off at the middle school before they left and you know that it's silly but these things add up so I hope everybody could kind of go along the same lines and we're all smart people we could put our heads together and figure something out but if we keep increasing the taxes um, I know Bobby Granada said you know, all the benefits of having that budget, one of them, you know, it attracts residents to our town for a good school system. And if you keep raising the taxes, you're going to drive people away. That's the other side of the coin. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Mazzarella. Do I have a motion to adjourn? So moved. Do I have a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Meeting is adjourned. Thank you and good night.